Okay, welcome to part two in this Mortal Kombat PCB information series. This video will be discussing Mortal Kombat 2. Now, Mortal Kombat 2 was released in 1993, and just like Mortal Kombat 1, Mortal Kombat 2 uses two different hardware setups. Now, they're both based off the T-Unit hardware, which I discussed in the Mortal Kombat 1 video, but they're different in the fact that this version you see here on camera uses what's called a memory expansion board. Upon its release, Midway was limited to 4 megabyte ROMs due to those being the biggest capacity on the market at the time. The game uses so much memory that they had to include what's called the memory expansion board that mounts on top of the main T-Unit board, which you can see right here. That This is the memory expansion board. I'll take it off and show it to you here in a second. And the reason for that is because the, the game used so much memory it needed extra information and places to store all that. So they came up with the memory expansion board to do just that, to expand the amount of memory that they're able to store on the board in order to play the game correctly the way it's supposed to be played. Now, later down the line, 8 megabyte ROMs became available and it eliminated the need for the memory expansion board. So that's the two different boards. If you have a main board without the connections on the side of the main board for the expansion board, such as this one, uh, well, let me show you here. As you can see there on camera, this, this, port, this PCB has this memory expansion board on top. Now this one here is also Mortal Kombat 2, but it does, as you can see it does not have the memory expansion board. And if you look on the sides here, there all of these spots here for the area for the expansion board to slip into is not there. It's just, they're just solder, filled in solder pads. Now on the one with the expansion board here, I'll pop it off real quick. Here's what the expansion board looks like. I have it marked good because this is a spare, actually. Um, but the expansion board is just eight ROMs on here, and this is just to hold the extra memory that's needed to play the game because all of these ROMs you see here are four megabyte ROMs. And all of these ROMs here on the other board that does not require the expansion board, these are all eight megabyte ROMs. So when this came out later down the line, it eliminated the need for the expansion board. So. If you have a board that looks like this with these black deals on the side, I'll put it up closer here. You can see these black pieces here, right there. Now that those, that's designed to cradle and connect to this memory expansion board. And you can see there how it hooks up to it. This just slips into these connections right there. And that's how everything interfaces. So if you have a board that looks like this, and it has these black connectors here, but it is missing this, you're not going to be able to play the game unless you get yourself one of these expansion boards. And when you boot the game up, all of these ROMs here, I believe it's U13, U6, U11, U8, U12, U7, U10, and U9. If When you boot your game up and all of those ROMs are red, but all of these ROMs are green, then you're definitely missing this and you're going to have to get yourself one of these. Now, if you're fortunate enough to have one of the newer versions of the T-Unit that does not require this, all of the information that's stored in these ROMs on this memory expansion board are integrated into the ROMs that are on board on the, the actual main board. So, that's the two different types of main T-Unit boards regarding Mortal Kombat 2. Now for the soundboard. The soundboard itself, just like Mortal Kombat 1, is separate from the main board. And you can see it right over here. This is the soundboard. But, it's different in the fact that this does not require a 50k ohm potentiometer in order to control the volume. It has a connection here for ribbon cable, just like MK1, and one connection here for the, sa the power for the soundboard. Mortal Kombat 1 used two separate connections for power. This one just has one. It's a 9-pin connector here, and a 9-pin connector up here on the main board. And so it's a different power cable. So if you, if you, I just got a question yesterday, as a matter of fact. Just yesterday, somebody asked me a question. Can I use a Mortal Kombat 1 soundboard for a Mortal Kombat 2 mainboard? And I had to say, no, you can't, because not only are they two completely different setups, uh, the, the power cables aren't the same. You can see here on the soundboard, it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 ROMs on it. Mortal Kombat 1 only has 3. So, it, regardless of that fact, it's two totally different setups, so you wouldn't be able to do it even if you tried or wanted to. Um, but, here's the soundboard. The power connection's here. It's, it's 9-pin, just like the one on the main board. And it's, uh, you know, you got your sound cable harness here, just like for Mortal Kombat 1. 
and the ribbon cable. And it's the same kind of setup, you know, you want to make sure that you, when you hook up pin one of the, this end to pin one of this end. So pin one of the main board goes to pin one of the soundboard for correct data transfer. And with the uh, connections being the same on the main board and the soundboard, it's kind of impossible to screw up the connection because the, you can look on here and you can see the cable has, uh, I don't want to say teeth, but it has a, this part here that will not allow you to hook it up backwards. So you hook up one end to your main board, just like that, and the other end goes to your soundboard. Let's see here. Just like that. So it's pretty cut and dry. Uh, it's not really something you can mess up, but you know, there is a chance of that happening, but I would say it's pretty slim. Anyway, so that all being said, that pretty much uh, goes over everything there is to really need to know about the basics of, of the different types of MK2 PCBs and what to look for if you're trying to purchase one. But I do want to talk about the different hacks. Now there's um, 9.1 and the 4.1 European version. I believe there's 4.2 and the Challenger hack. If you guys ever get your hands on those hacks, or if you want to order a hack for your Mortal Kombat 2 board, it's very simple. The only thing you have to change out are the revision ROMs. The revision ROMs are UJ12, this one right there, and UG12, which is that one right there. When it comes time to change out the ROMs to upgrade your board to one of the, the hacks of the game, you simply change out those two ROMs, and that's it. That's all you have to do. There's only two ROMs that get changed out to, to upgrade your board to one of the hacks. Uh, it's the same thing as MK1, it's just the two revision ROMs. Now, depending on if you have the Y unit or T unit, the Y unit's U89 and U105, and the T unit also on MK1 is UJ12 and UG12. So, uh, I believe that's everything there is to know about the Mortal Kombat 2 boards as far as generalization of what, the, what you need to know as far as how they are set up and the two different types of main boards. So, uh, oh, I do want to say that the uh, JAMA Plus connection for low punch and low kick is located at the same spot as the MK1T unit. It's right here where it says player 3. I got a, a white piece of the tooth broken off there, but all the pins are intact. But this is the connection right here for your low punch and low kick for player 1 and player 2. Now, uh, when, I get, when I talk about Mortal Kombat 3 and Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 and Mortal Kombat 4, it's the exact same 15 pin connector, but th that connector has a, a run wire added in there for the run button. So, otherwise it's all the same connection. But. Uh, so that's pretty much it. I want to say thanks for watching again, and if you do have any questions, feel free to ask, and I'll do my best to uh, answer them promptly. So there you go.